Hi everyone, it's me, Rina again, ready to, ready at your service, ready to cook for you this week. And this week's episode is I want to show you how to clean fish, how to serve whole fish without the bone in the middle. So I will start by cutting the dorsal, dorsal fin first which is like that. All of the fins must be removed yeah, before I go into removing the scales and gills and uh, guts. And so the, yeah, this, these gills remove all of them, all of those, before I remove, before I remove the, the scales. This is um, this is bass, sea bass. Uh, it's about 400 grams, half a kilo actually. So this can serve healthy portion for one person. But today I um, will just want to show you. So here it is. I'm removing the the scale. I'll bring it over to the sink after I remove it because I need to remove. I need to wash it before I cut the fish. Remove the scale. Which, okay. It's, if you don't, uh, if you don't like doing this, I'm sure the fishmongers will do it for you. See, removing scales. I have. Go. Now, now let me go to the sink and remove this, this scales, wash it down, and then I'll show you how to cut it, how to open the fish, so we can put the stuffing. Here's, now I'm ready to show you how to uh, open the fish, which I'm going to do it from the back. Most people do it this side from which is from the belly um, but this particular recipe is I like to put stuffing on it so I like to cut it from here which is it's like filleting fish but it's different because fillet is no top to uh, no head and no tail anymore so this is let's start so the reason I have this um, this tea towel is because in case the knife slip, then my hand is protected. Look at my my operation tools on my on here. So I start with this big knife. Like a proper so surgeon here. This is yeah. This is how I do it. Yeah, just going through all the way to the tail. And like this, and on the bone, the, the bone actually is the guideline where to put the knife as you continue going through the filleting, filleting uh, position. Filet, they call, I like to call it filet, English people call it fillet. So, not sure which one is right anymore, but I do it my way. I do it my way. Filet is French. Filetto, I guess, is Italian. In Italiano filetto. But what is the verb? So, here. So, that's, that's, that's it. So, that I'm getting close to uh, by removing the the middle bone, flip it over, so now we start again from the other end, start again the other end, the other side, not the that way. I learned how to do this because I really like fish but I don't like to eat it I don't with the bones and everything still in while I'm eating. 
So you're cutting while well, no one does. So, so I said cook, so I said cook. I'm, I'm sitting already and I'm eating, I'm not working anymore, so therefore should be no bones anymore there. I don't like wrestling all those bones like I do uh, on preparation time. So you're, essentially what you're doing is you've been cutting down on yeah. either side of the bone. Yes, yes, exactly. And uh, just a little bit of practice. I did it myself, so you can do it as well. If I can do it, you can do it. And believe me, it's, it's very nice to eat the whole fish without the bone in the middle and everything that you don't want to eat in there. So, so now, basically like that already, Now the bone in the middle is separated from the meat, fish meat. So I'm going to use the scissor and cut it, the end where the tail is first. Oh, a little bit of navigation here, but um, it will work. So you don't need to get my okay, big for the workshop. Now it's done. See, and now it's the. the the other, the, where the close to the head, let me just show you, close to the head, okay, bravo, bravo me, and then at this point, I need to, to cut more away from the guts, and look, it's not even going into where the guts are, just be very careful at the same time not to to make a hole on the other side of the fish because we were going we we're going to put stuffing on it but if that happened practice 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 so now i'm going to move to the sink to remove the guts as well as the Gills, 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 yeah. So, follow me, please. Uh, I know cleaning place is not very glamorous. See that? You see how they separate the, the bone and the, the. Oops, now I need to. to um, that's it. That is it. Whole thing. The whole middle bone completely removed and now it's time to clean the, the, the guts and the middle little bones there so so okay here it is I guess use my hand you can use you can use a scissor but I have um, my hands are not delicate <laughs> so it's okay I can do it without gloves if you prefer to use it if you prefer to use gloves, go. Go. Okay. Let's cut. Yeah. I'm just cutting, cutting that. I think they got in separate from gill. There we go. Perhaps you do that so you can see everything. Can you put the innards into soup or something like that if you're maybe. hungry i guess i maybe not the guts and beans i i can use this this bone for fish stuff what's that famous dish they make in singapore fish head curry mm -hmm. very very nice but it's uh, well it's, it's actually a poor person's dish which they used up the head which nobody wanted. Tilt towards me. Yes. And again. Okay, thank you. Okay, as you can see, it's nice and clean already inside. Bone is removed. So there still have some bones here in the middle which I'm going to remove it with tweezers. You, I can use it by 
I can use my fingers, but it's a little bit difficult. So, um, this is the only way I find to use tweezers. There it is. Should I get my needle? I don't, I really don't like anything that's going to stick in your throat. It stick on my throat and disturb my appetite. So it's not very much there. It's only two to three sometimes. It's five bones. So you can sometimes people I people sometimes doesn't even bother to remove them. So, <laughs> so I haven't tell you I haven't tell you what the stuffing will be. So this is these are tomatoes you can because I I, have, I can stuff it with fennel. Usually I stuff it with fennel. This week I will do with tomatoes for a change. So the tomatoes I'm just putting it in hot water. I'm sure everybody knows these tricks already. Um, the, the reason I'm putting it in hot water because I want to I want the skin to loosen up so I can remove it easily. So I think it only take about. 10 seconds, especially when the tomato is very ripe, so does it don't leave it too long, too long in boiling water. So I'm removing it by my hand. I have a asbestos hand, so don't do it, don't do it at home. Use a spoon. So yeah, so here it is. So I want this the skin removed as well as the seeds because I want it. I already spent time removing the bones from the fish, so I really cannot put anything uh, unpleasant. The tomatoes are being peeled, the seeds are removed now. I'm just chopping them uh, thinly, not very thin, but should be small pieces. And then I'm going to Lightly cook it, saute it, saute them with herbs in olive oil together with the herbs and the seasoning, which is red peppercorn and black pepper, of course. So let's have a look. Let's put this in. I want it cooked. Okay, let's see if it's sizzling away. I always like the sound of the sizzling. Olive oil. Quite. Olive oil, I presume, right? Okay, not, not I have, yes. I have olive oil. Tablespoon this one. Because I don't want it too much. There it is. So it's already hot oil. So it's the beautiful sizzling is very nice sound in the kitchen. Chopping some wild fennel to add to the tomatoes. If you cannot get wild fennel, dill is also very good with fish. So, okay. okay, that's it. The reason, the reason for this method is putting the stuffing for it is to bring all the flavor together. I mean, the tomatoes should be dark red, but these are orange, so I have to wait a little bit more for my tomatoes. By July, August, they'll be great. So, I put salt, salt, salt and yeah. Here's the tomatoes, tomatoes. Put them in the bowl. Put them in a bowl because I still have some flavoring to add in there and. Also, I like to leave it cool before I put it inside the fish. So, here is the extra flavor I want to put. It's red peppercorn, which is beautiful for fish. And I'm just going to grind it with pistol and water because I don't have a um, grind ready. So, red peppercorn doesn't grind like and of course I add black pepper, why not? So, and of course this is my little secret for this recipe is 
um, orange, zest of orange only. I like it very zesty and fresh. Yes, the flavorings are here. Herbs and uh, herbs and orange. So and the oil from the orange is just fantastic flavor. It's leafy. So not too much for one so zest of orange for one fish. Depending the size of the fish and the, the size of orange. I tried this so many times and I like it. So Okay, the seasoning, the, the, the seasoning is ready, the stuffing is ready now. I'm going to put salt and pepper inside, inside the fish. That should be. Okay, and again is the red pepper, red pepper corn and black pepper. It's a base. So here we go. Fun bit. Put the stuffing in. And also by putting the stuffing, the fish will fly will plump up. Um, because the bone is not there, obviously. So the fish, if you don't stuff it, the fish will um, thin. thin. So it. So, that is so beautiful. And I'm going to put olive oil on the oh, I'm going to put olive oil, rub it with olive oil. I only put seasoning inside, I mean seasoning salt inside, not outside for this for this recipe. So, okay, now put it over to go to the oven. Yeah, it doesn't matter if the stuffing goes out. So, how see you, it. Should can't it? you put toothpicks or something to um, stitch it up? No, up? no, no. The idea is to show that, that, that it's open from the back. You can fool actually when you serve the fish. You can fool people by serving this end. So when they cut it, they'll be surprised. Oh, it's no, no bone in the middle. So there it is. So ready. This will take about 20 minutes. 20 minutes. And then I'm going to prepare the sauce. While this is roasting, while the fish is roasting, I'm going to prepare the sauce and the roast potato. See you later. There it is. 20 minutes, 200 degrees. So, roasting potato is another masterpiece. My master class. Um, here it is. Let's start with olive oil. Let's say just another couple of olive oil in a pan. It doesn't matter. In general, with olive oil, it's, olive oil is good for you. So these are the potatoes already been peeled, cut into chunks. So put them in. Put them in. Wash as well. Nice and clean. So. And pepper. They are always together. Here it is. I want to show you how I roast my potatoes without parboiling on the pan. Oh, switch it off before I put my finger. So I just want to coat it with olive oil, the potato size, because it's hot already, so I'm shaking it. So the potatoes is an Roasting it without parboiling is got olive oil there and salt and pepper. That's all. We add more just before finish cooking. We add more flavoring in there. So the reason for this is 
we put the high heat at first we put the lid on leave it there for five minutes the reason for it is the steam will come up will go down and will speed up the cooking of potatoes and then we'll come back to it after five minutes time to time during the five minutes time to time you have to shake it just in case it sticks on the top. so i'll show you later after five minutes for those who have seen me some episodes before i'm making sauce for the fish which are made from herbete swiss chard is the closest one you can get probably you can get all of the of these uh, herbete so i just removed them from from stalks and now i'm boiling putting them in boiling water to blanch them for about five minutes before i put them to food processor to uh, to puree it for the fish so you know so we have we can be generous in vegetables this time of year because they go like mass. Not to complain. Okay, here's the herbete has been blanched. Now it's ready to puree to food processor, my little friend, my sous chef. And in go, we go. Yeah. Rosemary and potato. Garlic, oh, so this man of Mediterranean again, rosemary. <laughs> Good, no jokes about girlfriends. No, that is the potatoes I'm talking about. Roast potatoes in the pan without parboiling, and it's actually quicker to roast in a pan than over. Surprisingly, I don't know why. Probably uses less energy. <laughs> I don't know. Could so, it be because these are fresh potatoes? Um, or does it work for uh, old potatoes too? Well, I mean, so it doesn't matter. Fresh or, yeah. So I'm adding garlic. I, I'm adding garlic at the end of the cooking because I don't want it burning. I want the flavor. Look at how much garlic I put in there. Garlic is good for you too. And then, rose, and then rosemary. Tim's uh, collection of names. Or <laughs> that is the polite, polite way of saying. So, there we go. Wait a second. Wait. Oh, the smell of garlic and rosemary is fantastic. Delicious. Go with the fish. You go with the fish as well. Mm. Did I ever tell you about my girlfriend called Dill? Oh. She was a real, she was a real dilly. I miss that one. She was a real dilly. <laughs> Here's the fish. Just came out from the oven. After being in the oven for 20 minutes, preheated before I put it in. Now, there's one more thing I want to show you before I cut it. 
the bow, not the back, under the belly, no, not the belly, close to the tail, that particular bone must be removed before serving. I could not, I, I leave it there because if I had to remove it before stuffing, then we'll have a very big hole in here. So, I just remove it now. So, it, and it is a very nasty bone as well. It's very big, <laughs> very big. I put it in the corner of the cutting board. So here it is. I want since that is the one I'm aiming for, is to cut the fish without the bone in the middle. So if you don't like to eat the skin, it's entirely up to you. I just want to show you how to cook it is after 20 minutes. That's is gorgeous in the middle and all you need is white wine and sea breeze inside the kitchen of yours. while the fish was cooking. I can tackle that myself. My husband can. Very fresh. Oh, I have all this a little bit. See, I cut it in half and we have potato to go with it. On the side, on the side. Oh, it smells like weekend. Good Grazie. I'll come back for more potatoes later, right? Oh, vegetable puree. Oh, everything in one plate. Oh, sometimes you just have to do that for relaxing. Meal. Yeah. Okay, film director's hat off. Wine tasting in progress. Oh, yes. So for today's wine, we are going back to Franconi as we did last week. And this one is another Nashketa. You may remember we had the Nashketa two or three weeks ago from Riveto which was interesting, but it was a little bit old. This is a 2019 uh, Longin Nascheta called Leonina. Wow, is that a lady lion? I'm a Leo, I mean, it's a tiger. And it actually has a cord. And so, let's give it the spin. Now, Nascheta is actually a new wine for both of us, we're not overly familiar with this type. So, let's do the honors. Let's do the check out the color first. Mm. Not so bad. Um, it smells wonderful. Yeah, it's got, it's got nice, it's, it's a nice color actually. It's, it's okay. Go with the fish. Mm. Nice nose. Not as perfumey as the Arnais, but maybe just because I had it in the fridge. Anyway, let's give it a taste. Mm. That is most unusual. Gooseberries. See, see what you taste. It's got, it's got unusual. No, 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 gooseberries. Passion fruit. Che bello. <laughs> che buono. Mm. 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 Right. Anyway, mm. so, uh, again, 
Cheers to everybody. Uh, we're not sitting outside today because it's a bit uh, windy and unsettled for the last week. Rain almost every day. Um, and today's Friday. It's, thank God it's Friday day. It's That's fish right. day. Fish from the fish yeah. without the bone. And <laughs> we, welcome, we welcome you to Pier Marti when the time is right. Cheers. Cheers. See you soon. plate because I'm eating now, not working anymore. But I do, I do wish you try this for your dinner. Maybe not tonight, maybe next Friday. Ciao!